before we launch into the subject matter at hand, because we're talking about stress and managing stress and um, dealing with the curveballs that are currently being thrown at us, I want to just make sure everybody understands that I'm not a doctor, I am not a counselor, I am not a psychotherapist, I'm a voice teacher. Um, I'm a voice teacher who works with a lot of people who are in high stress situations. Um, and through that, I became very, very interested in the nervous system and how the, the, the role that the nervous system plays for singers. And so that is kind of my frame of reference. Um, so I just want to be really clear about that before we launch into things. So um, one thing that I wanted to uh, show you guys, you know, one of, as we are, I'm going to exit full screen and um, share my screen with you guys. As we've been negotiating the uncertain uh, waters, one of the things that I think keeps me going is seeing some interesting um, memes and posts. Um, and so I'm going to, I have a couple of them saved here that I wanted to share with you guys. This was one of my favorites that came down. There we go. It's open. Can you guys all see my my little Facebook grab there? Dear extroverts, you will survive this. Dear introverts, quit laughing. They're new to this social distancing thing. Now I'm a I'm a little bit of an introvert, so it's it's been a, I mean there's definitely some challenges, but having extra alone time for me has not been a big deal. But I know my husband is an extrovert, and it's been a lot harder for him. So um, it's pretty funny but also sad at the same time. So I just wanted to share that little humor, find the humor where we can. Okay, so um, one of the things that I think is super important when we're dealing with uh, change, when I do this talk with younger kids, I call it managing um, big changes. We've had a lot of big changes in our life, but we can get, I can be a little more direct with this group, so I'm going to. Um, we have to acknowledge what has happened. We have to acknowledge what it is that we're dealing with. And the only word that I can um, find that I think adequately explains what's happened to us and is currently still happening to us is trauma. There are lots of different kinds of trauma. People that specialize in trauma, they'll sometimes say there's, there's little t trauma and there's big t trauma. And I think depending on the person and who you are, um, that's, you know, some people will experience this as a little T trauma. Other people, it's a big T trauma. And that's for you to sort out where that is. But my personal definition of trauma is when your world has been turned upside down, either physically, emotionally, you know, um, relationally. And I think we all have to at least acknowledge that, okay, that's what we're dealing with globally. We've globally experienced a trauma. Now, that doesn't mean that we give it all the power. But I think in order to process it, it's important to acknowledge it and then say, okay, so that's what that is. Now I'm not going to let you own me. And then you can move on from there. Um, the way that we process trauma is everybody processes it a little bit different. And that's okay. That's also important to um, understand and acknowledge. So um, some people will be fine now in six months from now, they'll be dealing with it. Other people... It's like this, you know, where it kind of comes in waves um, and that's okay. Some people are a mess one day and then they're fine the next day. Some people are up and down throughout the day. Um, and these are all okay and normal. Um, so it's important to know. And I think it, the most important thing for us is to understand it's not just us. And I think most of us know that, you know, it's like, okay, we're all in this together. How many times have we heard that over the last few weeks? But um, I, that's been particularly helpful for me and some of my students to be able to process that, um, you know, we are globally together and we're all working together to get through this, which I think is, is very helpful when you're having a harder time. So the reason why um, we're going to, you're going to experience some really interesting changes physiologically, meaning in your body, but also emotionally, is um, with trauma comes fight or flight. And um, how I, it's kind of hard to interact in this um, <clears throat> environment the way that we would in a normal classroom situation. Do you guys know that you can raise your hand? Do you guys know that? If you go down to the manage participants and then you click on it 
and you hover over yourself, you should be able to raise your hand and lower your hand. And you can also give some reactions down at the bottom. I think it's just like a thumbs up and a clap. <laughs> they don't allow you to be negative on Zoom. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to just ask for those of you that want to participate um, in this, I'm going to throw out some things that I've noticed. Um, has anyone noticed that they are forgetting things? Like, I know for me, and you can just raise your hand, thumbs up, whatever kind of reaction you want to do. I've noticed for me, um, I will forget things that I, like everyday things, like what's happening next? But last week, there was a couple, um, like a good half hour where I couldn't remember my social security number. That was crazy. Luckily, I have my social security card, so I was able to access it. Um, but, but that is... It's normal. It's not anything to um, be frightened of. Um, it's, it's harder to stay focused, right? Have some of us experienced focus issues? Um, I've even experienced some balance issues, like running into things and falling downstairs and things like that. And luckily, I have a really good sense of humor. One of my um, one of my life sayings is always pack your sense of humor because sometimes that's all you got, right? So I'm like falling down the stairs going, wow, this is spectacular. I wish I would have filmed that, you know, um, and understanding that, no, I'm not having, you know, a, a complete breakdown. This is part of it. Um, it's part of the experiencing of just adjusting. Um, and all of this is because of this fight or flight response. Um, and we're, we're experiencing it to different degrees all day long at this point, probably. Um, I think the peak for me was a couple weeks, like maybe a week ago, where I was like, ah, all the time. And now I feel like I've kind of come down. Is anybody else feeling like they're settling in a little bit more? Um, yeah, not quite so turbulent up and down. Yeah, okay, great. Um, <clears throat> and I, I'm still expecting there to be more waves. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that... Uh, we leave room in our mind for that too. One of the things I like to um, say when I'm talking to people about this is I feel like somebody's picked me up, shaken me, spun me around, and set me down. I may or may not still be wearing a blindfold. And I'm like this. And then just the second that I feel like, okay, I'm starting to get my bearings, they pick me up again and it starts all over again. So it, it, there will be more waves probably most likely, if we can be prepared for that. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about fight or flight. Fight or flight is a body's, it is the autonomic nervous system's response to stress. And when we are in a stressful, what our body is perceiving as a life or death situation, um, certain things happen in the body and it's normal and it's supposed to help us survive when we are in grave, imminent danger. So our heart rate will change. We've all experienced that. The heart starts pounding or racing. Our breathing will change. That is to help us decide, am I going to fight? Am I going to flee? Or am I going to play dead? And there's actual, like there, the physiology is quite clear. When you go into this fight or flight breathing pattern, it's to enable you to make a, whatever choice you make, you can do it. You can either play dead <laughs> you know, or the quick breath means you get quick oxygen to the muscles so you can either flee or fight. And it also sets your body so that if you're choosing to fight, you're not going to get knocked over. So um, unfortunately, none of those are very helpful when we're dealing with a virus and self-isolation, right? None of those breathing patterns are really going to help us get through that. If a tiger was in the room with me, it might be helpful, but I don't have a tiger in the room with me at this current moment. I have a little um, something doodle who's 13 years old right outside my door. That's the only ferocious animal in my house, and she's 13 pounds. And she's asleep and deaf. So I'm not in much danger from her. So, um, so yeah, your heart rate changes. Your breathing changes. Your vision changes. Um, like, literally, you'll get, like, almost a tunnel vision sometimes. That's why the balance will sometimes be off. Your hearing will change. This is something that's really interesting in the world of performance anxiety. Um, it's why if you are a singer and you're like, 
I and I've got this song, I'm ready to go, and then you get nervous and all of a sudden you can't hear your starting note. Or you like are singing out of tune and you're like, why, 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 why am I singing out of tune? It's because in when your body is in fight or flight, everything everything your body does is to ensure your survival to the next moment. Singing in tune typically is not high on the hierarchy of keeping you alive, right? Hearing the rustle in the brush of the tiger, that's going to keep you alive. Hearing, um, you know, hearing water if you're like dying of thirst, being able to pick up those different frequencies. So your body goes into survival mode, literally. And um, so again, the hearing thing doesn't really help us in our situation right now. But those are changes that are happening in your body. <clears throat> so, sorry. And then we have this whole allergy thing. Another meme that really um, was hilarious to me, one of my friends posted. So this, you know, having my allergies go crazy at this particular time isn't helping anything. Because every time I sneeze, I think, do I have five days to live or do I need to take a Claritin? That's another thing that just kind of made me laugh. You know, you got to have that set, that sets of humor again. So um, all of these fight or flight physiological things are normal. Um, you want to give yourself space, give yourself grace, everyone else too. I think we're, we're being very generous usually with other people, but make sure you're also giving the same generosity to yourself to deal with um, whatever's happening for you. Um, and then try to develop some strategies to um, help you process things. Um, we're distracted right now. We got a lot going on. There's a lot of newness. Um, and because of that, um, we're going to have to maybe change some of the ways that we do business, if that makes sense. Um, one of the things I noticed right off the bat is uh, my memory shot right now. We were, I'm having to relearn how to teach. I still know what to teach. Like I, I'm a voice teacher. I know how to teach voice, but, and I've done a little bit of online, but I've had to completely relearn how to interact with my student how to get feedback from them, how to give them feedback, how to um, you know, really be able to hone in and see how are they feeling because emotions are important. If you're not feeling great at your voice lesson, that's gonna affect how well you do. So I'm learning this new way of doing business, right? Um, which means it's harder for me, my head is full of all that newness, it's harder for me to focus on the task at hand. And I teach at um, four different universities and I'm seeing this in all of my students too, where they're just like, I, you know, how do I get from class to class? How do I interact with my teacher? How do I interact with my peers? Where are my books? You know, all these things, it's like, it's, it's a different process. And that's taking up a lot of your hard drive space, just learning how to do these new things. So um, it's really, really important to acknowledge that and then go, okay, now let's problem solve it, right? One of the most important things is to allow yourself to feel all the things that you're feeling, the frustration, the worry, the grief, it's okay to acknowledge those again and then go, all right, now I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to allow myself to stay in that spot and just wallow there because that's not going to fix anything, right? So one of the things I noticed because my biggest issue has been memory. I don't typically fall down out of my chair. You know, I, I'm having balance issues, but... Um, I'm not noticing that when I'm teaching. I'll be fine when I'm teaching and then I don't remember a blessed thing afterwards. Like I, my first Zoom lesson that I taught, it was one of my students who had to go back home to New Jersey. And um, I noticed that her room was purple. I remembered that her room was purple and that she didn't straighten her hair. She let it fro out and it was the coolest thing ever. Literally, those are the only two things I remembered from that first Zoom lesson that I taught. I'm like, whoops. Maybe I need to plan so that I can remember what we actually worked on. So I started to um, write an email. At every lesson now, I open up an email and I kind of transcribe what it is that we're working on for the student and also for myself. I call it breadcrumbs, a breadcrumb trail, so we can get back. So in the, in a way to become, you know, keep yourself productive and stay on track, 
um, some strategies that I've come up with and then I want to open and see if anybody has anything else that's worked for them. Um, but I record everything that I can. Anytime I can record something I do. I take notes, like good old fashioned handwritten notes or I type. And the notes app on my phone is, I mean I use it a lot but it's like overflowing now. Um, and then like I said I do emails so that the person that I'm talking to and, and myself that both of us have a record of what it is that we actually were doing business not just remember that I touched them and that we interacted but the details of the interaction does anybody else have anything that they've come up with that is really helpful for remembering things anything that they'd like to share you can either type it in the notes or you can unmute yourself and raise your hand Nope. Okay, Gigi, let me know if any. Oh, Richie says I keep a journal. Yeah. Yeah, journals. Uh, my one of my daughters is doing a bullet journaling. She's put a, put aside forty five minutes every day to do journaling, and that that seems to help her. And setting alarms. Yeah. Yeah, that's super helpful. Thank goodness we have what we have technologically. Can you imagine doing this thirty years ago? Those of you that can remember thirty years ago. Phone and TV, that's all we had, right? <laughs> so there are some things to be grateful for in this um, in this situation. Yeah, that's good, good feedback. Um, okay. Um, oh, here's one other thing I wanted to share with you guys. Um, my friend Jessica um, shared this on her show, social media. I'm going to back up a little bit. Sorry, guys. Um, I wanted to go back to... Well, however you're feeling, it's okay because we all are processing this differently. But this is what she shared, and I just I thought it was great. She's like, yes, and it's okay to be grateful and also disappointed about the things that have been canceled. It's okay to enjoy the extra time with our loved ones and to be overwhelmed by their presence. That was me last night. My daughter's or have decided to go back and listen and watch all the old Disney movies that they loved when they were little and sing them all at the top of their lungs maybe at midnight or later <laughs> it's a little much for mommy um, yes we can be hopeful and feel like everything is falling apart there's room for both of those feelings and they're both okay and yes we can be a source of support for others and also prioritize our own needs. Somebody has something that they're sharing. Let me open that up. Yeah, yeah, feeling, yeah, and it's okay, you guys. It's, um, it, it's okay, it's part of the whole process. And there's a long, long list of other things that you can feel at the same time. You know, those are just the first few. But I, I love it. The way she framed that, she's like, you guys, stop being toxically positive. I'm like, that's an interesting phrase. But you know, as sometimes, and I tend to fall into this, like, we're going to be fine. This is great. We're going to, rah, yeah, let's do this. But sometimes that, that doesn't serve what we need. You know, we have to acknowledge, okay, some, some really not great stuff is happening. But I am also going to not wallow in that. I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm not going to give it any more power than, than it deserves. And, and both from both directions. So, um, so I'm going to give you a suggestion. Um, adjust your expectations and move forward. Uh, I've been going back into my classes at UCI. They started last week. And, you know, I, I, I like to get a lot of feedback from my students. I go, so how are your classes going? And what I'm hearing from a lot of them is, well, you know, it doesn't really work. This, this class in particular, you know, I thought it was going to be this. But it's, you kind of can't, can't do that online. And that is absolutely true. So we can spend the, whole, the next however many weeks um, being irritated and frustrated that it's not what we expected it to be. Or we can adjust our expectations and move forward. Um, what I've done in my online lessons, because I'm teaching online, I'm still teaching all the university students and as many of my, as, of my private students as can still uh, make it happen. And 
what we are doing is we are focusing not on what we can't do, but we're focusing on what we can do. And there are some things in this world of, you know, floating heads on a screen, there are some things we can do very, very well. So the more you can focus on that, um, in my own personal studio, um, you know, teaching all the, the privates, I'm like, okay, well, I can't really give you a, the, the real life situation where I'm accompanying you and you're singing along with me. So now is probably not the time to work on um, learning how to phrase with a pianist because that's not going to be very effective. But you know what I can do? I can take pictures of tongue positions and I can share those pictures with you and I can draw all over them. And then you can be, you know, looking at you, feeling your tongue and putting them in those positions. And we can be like, hey, yeah. and it's all sorts of weird. And then you sing better because you've never thought about your tongue position in an E or you've never thought about your tongue position going from an E to an A. Ah. And maybe that's why your tongue is tight. You know your tongue is tight, but maybe that's why. And you've never thought about it before. You've never had that opportunity to really do a deep dive into that particular subject matter. So there are lots of things that we can do. And so I'm gonna encourage you to do it. Um, find something that you really wanna do. From that list of it's okay to you know, want to take care of others and also focus on yourself. If you can find something that's going to give you purpose, that's going to be interesting for you, um, do it. Absolutely 100%. My kids, um, over the weekend, when the, the whole mask edict came down, everybody should be wearing masks outside their house if they can, or suggestion, um, we were looking and seeing, because we sew. I grew up in the Midwest. We do a bunch of weird stuff. I made flowers and my own wedding cake. Uh, like I just learned a bunch of stuff because we had long winters. So um, my, my daughters all know how to sew. So I'm like, you know, we know how to sew. Maybe we can make some masks. Now we've been financially impacted by everything that's happened. So I can't afford to give, we cannot afford to give them all away, but we can, we have a lot of stuff laying around the house. We'll reuse, repurpose, and then we'll charge less because there's a lot of predatory people out there charging like $35 for a homemade mask. Like, well, let's let's find a price point that we think is going to work, you know, where we're not losing money, but we're not taking advantage of people. And I have my daughters doing this. Like I said, you guys, what do you think of this? And maybe we can, you know, prioritize old people and babies and pregnant women. They're now sewing 15 hours a day, you guys. They're sewing their little fingers off. It's my own personal little sweatshop. It's actually their sweatshop. They're the ones that are doing it. I'm in here teaching all day. Um, and they've now made almost 200 masks. And it's given them purpose. And I'm giving all the money to them. So because I'm like, and I mean, they're, they're like charging like $5, $10. It's like a drop. But um, it's given them purpose. And they, come, they came to me, my, one of my daughters came to me yesterday. And she's like, I wasn't on my phone at all today. Look, zero minutes. I'm like, yes. Last week, she laid in her bed for 16 hours on her phone. But it's been something that's given her purpose. You know, so if anybody um, knows how to sew, the need for masks is great right now. It is great. And it's something that will keep you busy and feel like you're doing something, you know. But let's talk from a performer standpoint, because most of us in here are performers or aspiring performers. Um, now may not be the time to uh, really work out this one like really specific technical issue that's been bothering you that you really have to have great hearing and be in the room with the teacher for. But maybe now's a time to revamp your audition book. Go through and figure out what's not working. Where are my holes? What can I fill in? You know, now maybe is a time to work on your sight singing. Now's maybe a time to figure out why is my tongue so tight? Why is my jaw so tight? Nina's saying, I think it's about being authentic. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a good point too. 
Um, but yeah, figure out what you can do and what's interesting to you and what's going to keep you focused and do that. If you can afford um, to take lessons in something, do it. There were two weeks where, because um, my studio, I have three teachers that teach for me and then myself, and there were like two or three weeks where it was crickets. Nobody was doing anything. And now just this week, people are like, you know what? My life is going on. I've wanted to take lessons, and I, I've decided I'm going to reach out even though, I mean, I don't know. Are you still teaching? That's what I'm getting. I don't know. Are you still teaching? Yeah, we're teaching. We figure it out, you know? Um, if you are financially impacted and you can't afford lessons, um, I don't know that I really recommend the free YouTube vocal instruction. There are There is some that are good, but you have to be able to wade through it. But there's a whole lot of piano and instrumental, ukulele, guitar. If you have a guitar sitting in your room and you're like, I know three chords, maybe now's the time to learn 10 more. You know, I know three songs. Okay, learn 10 more. Now's the time. Yeah, Aaron's raising his hand. Do it. That'll give you purpose. It'll keep you focused. Okay. Um, I have my notes over here on my iPad. So, okay. Um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I don't know where it is on my notes. Um, oh, it's next, actually. We're going to do some really practical things now. I'm going to take you through a couple exercises. Um, Aaron loves singing Broadway show. Yeah, sing through. Well, that's what my kids are doing. They're like, we're going to go back through all those Disney movies. And um, right. yeah. First of all, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, Diana looks like she's got her hand up. She has a question. Diana. Diana. Unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, Diana. Hi, how are you? Um, hey, thanks. I really appreciate everything you're saying. And I wanted to share. Um, so I'm a doctor. And um, I like to sing on the side. But really, I'm on here because I have two kids and who are very creative and they're both aspiring performers and they're both in MT. Um, it's hard because I've been asked to work even more in the hospitals and in the clinics and I do work. Today's my day off, which is hard because I know that my colleagues are working a lot. And of course I'm wearing masks and everything and testing for Corona and everything. It's been very hard because here I am wanting to help others. I've been asked to go to New York to also help and I can't leave because I want to be home for my children who are having trouble being motivated at home. Yeah. It's very interactive. It's all visual. It's all interacting with their peers. And it's like they're losing their interest. They're losing their motivation. And it's been very hard to struggle with that. So really the stress is for me too, being here. Yeah. So I'm not, you know? Yeah. So um, like earlier you showed that thing about, you know, taking care of others, but definitely try to take care of yourself too. And I'm struggling a lot with that because I'm not looking at taking care of myself. I'm taking care of my family, but I also have this responsibility to take care of everyone outside. Yeah, the balance is, it's tough. It's really, it's, it's something that we're all struggling with. Thank you for sharing that, Diana. Yeah. Um, yeah, motivation is hard. I'm, I'm noticing um, a lot of students are having a hard time staying focused on, I, I have a recitalist um, at one of my schools who, she's like, I'm just, I'm having a hard time. I know I need to be singing two hours a day because my recital now that was supposed to be in um, April is now going to be in July. It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay singing. It's hard to keep doing all these things. And it's like, yeah, and you know what? It's okay. It's okay for you to feel that. And if it, it, this would fall in the adjust expectations, I think, I think, you know, we're so used to having our foot pedaled on the metal all the way to the ground, a hundred miles an hour, straight ahead, moving, moving, moving forward. And maybe now it's enough to go, well, I sang today. I sang something today. I may not have spent two hours practicing, but I sang something. You know, and um, sometimes that has to be like that you have to adjust that. And then um, there will be moments where you're feeling very inspired. And then you take advantage of those, you know, and for your kids, um, for sure, I would uh, recommend have them join a lot of those free classes that are out there. There's a lot of um, free things. I know in my studio, we're just getting ready to send out an email 
um, and social media campaign, we're starting group classes that are going to meet several times a week, just so that people can have a feeling of a sense of community. And okay, guys, we're going to sing. You know, today's going to be Bruno Mars. We're just going to sing all Bruno Mars. We're, you know, or we're just going to, today we're singing Elton John or whatever. We're, we have lots of different things in the works. And I know it's not just my company. There are other companies that are trying to do that kind of thing to keep people engaged and involved and motivated. Um, but it is probably going to look a little different for the next few weeks at least. Um, and I have four kids myself. And um, they're sort of doing school. <laughs> they're sort of, you know, they're singing a lot of Disney. <laughs> and they're making masks right now. And I, I'm, it, for my own, what, what's made it okay for me is, you know what? The SAT is still going to be there. It's still going to be there and people are going to accommodate. And right now they're learning other things. They're learning how to prioritize when we have, you know, 200 people ask for, for asking for masks. How do we prioritize? Who do we give the mask to? I have a half a box of N95s that I got, the masks. And they, the, at, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe now they'll take them, but the hospitals wouldn't take them because it was already open. I got them last fall when the fires, because the air quality is really bad by my house. So when we had uh, an 80-year-old um, a person contact us asking for masks, one for her 80-year-old father who has cancer. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to give you your mask. You're not going to pay us for your mask. And I'm going to give you an N95 for, your, for grandpa, you know? Um, and they're learning that, which for me, that's more important right now. Um, there will be time for the other stuff. Um, they're also learning how to run a business, which is kind of cool. You know, my 11 year old, she's not doing so well, but the 15 year old's killing it. She's doing great. Um, okay, so we're gonna do some really practical stuff. I'm gonna go fast, okay? Some of this is super obvious, I know, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You've heard it probably already a lot, but you need to hear it again. Um, find a reason to get up in the morning. Do your morning routine. I usually get up at 5.30. I'm not making myself get up at 5.30, but the first week I was sleeping. <laughs> I'm like, I don't got to get anybody to school. I was on spring break at all my universities. I'm like, I'm going to be in my pajamas all day. But starting last week, I'm like, I'm getting up no later than 8 o'clock. This week, I'm trying to get up at 7. That's reasonable. Um, I'm taking a shower. I'm getting dressed. I'm making myself put on makeup almost every day. If I'm going to be on screen, I don't want people to look at me without makeup on because I'm of that age. Um, routine is really important. It's really, really important. As much of your routine, there's, I love your puppy. Um, as much of your routine that you can still do, you should do it. And yeah, wear your pajama, pajama pants all day. That's the funnest part of all of this. But from the waist up, we're professional, right? Um, make sure you still eat. Maybe not um, all Nutella and Captain Crunch, <laughs> but maybe sometimes, right? But make sure you still eat on a schedule. These are basic things that sometimes go out the window. Um, and then you're going to feel gross and yucky if you don't sleep and you don't eat and you don't take showers. Basic. Um, but it's surprising how many people are just struggling with that. Um, stretch. Every single day, do some stretches. This is specifically for singers and performers. I know a lot of people are taking online Zoom dance classes, which is great, but we're also sitting like this a large part of the day. When we do this, it's, comp it's literally compressing our spine. Um, our five-month-old is Mocha. Oh, I love Mocha. Um, it's compressing your spine. And when your spine is compressed, it's also compressing your ribs. And when your ribs are compressed, guess what? It's not as easy to breathe. And when it's not as easy to breathe, you're going to feel more anxious. Do you see how this kind of spirals? It's not good. So stretch every day. Um, I have a, a whole protocol of stretches that I make all my private students do that are very specific to make sure that their ribs and spine and neck remain free. So, um, Make sure that you are stretching and also your hips. Hip flexors um, are really, really important. 
So we're all sitting more than we're used to probably. Hip flexor, so as stretch. Um, all of those things you should be stretching every day, multiple times a day if you are really sitting a lot. I stretch several times a, a day now. And I'm gonna give you one stretch that we're gonna do right now together that everybody needs to be doing because our world is now this. I have to do an imitation. It's like, I miss you, right? And we're like this in the screen. And I'm gonna show you what happens sideways. Do you see how far out in front of my body my head is? This is very, very bad for our health for many reasons. Is anybody here, raise your hand or indicate, um, is anybody here experiencing more headaches than they normally do? Some people are a lot of the students, yeah. Um, it's mo almost certainly because of the screen, because your eyes are tired, number one. But number two, it could be this, the head forward. So it could be coming from your neck, okay? So we're gonna all do this together. You're gonna lace your fingers, you're gonna put them behind your head, like you're gonna um, rest your head back in your hands at the base of your skull. Then you're going to gently pull forward with your hands and push back with your head at the same time. We're gonna count to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then release for three. You should feel a little stretch in the back of your neck into the top of your shoulders. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And release for three. We're gonna do it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And release for three. Ooh. So what this does is it reminds your head that it is supposed to be on top of your body. <laughs> and it's gonna activate those posture muscles so that they can be in a little more functional position. Okay? Does everybody's head and neck feel a little bit better after doing that? Move it around? Yeah? Very cool. I got thumbs up. Yeah, and it is all the light from the screens. I have the blue screen, um, the blue blockers, but it's still not enough. My eyes are still sore by the end of the day because I'm just on it so much. Um, so, and we're going to get into the vision here in a, in a second. So, yeah, lots and lots of stretching. Um, practice breathing. Uh, your breath influences everything else that you do. Um, I like to, I don't know if this is a medical term or not, but I call it a biological imperative. It is what is going to keep me alive from moment to moment. Breathing is very high on that pyramid, right? Um, Aaron says, I have to I keep walking. Yeah, moving around is super important. That's on the list too. Um, but breathing is so important. We can go like 30 days without food and three days without water like three minutes without a breath. So if we are struggling with our breathing, we're not gonna do anything else as well as we can. So yeah, and Diane, yes, thank you, Diana. Yoga, um, so when I talk about breathing, cause I'm, I am an advanced MDH breathing coordination practitioner, which is based in, it's like function, it's all functional, it's very, very deep into the weeds and anatomy and physiology stuff. I'm a complete anatomy geek, that's why I have a skeleton in my office with me. Um, I like to divide breathing practice into good, better, and best. Yoga can be, um, it can be best. It can also just be eh, and it can also be harmful if you don't know what you're doing. So those of you that do yoga and it's like everything for you and it keeps you together breathing wise, you've probably figured it out. But I know for me, yoga was not effective. If anything, it was actually harmful because I was so clueless about what was happening to my body, I couldn't access the breathing that they were trying to teach me. I had to learn breathing another way. So as you are exploring breathing, I know for me, I had to actually take breathing lessons. That's what got me interested in MDH breathing coordination and what started my journey with it because I'm like, there is something really messed up in my body and I think it's connected to my breath. And then I started to study and I was like, oh yes, I am really messed up with my breath. And I had to do a lot and lot, a lot of, of rethinking about how I breathe and how I phonate and how I just live. Um, so yes, yoga can be very, very helpful. Um, I, I personally like MDH breathing coordination. There's not a lot of online free resources available, unfortunately, with that, just because of the way that that program is run. It's highly individual, um, where it's like, here's, this is anatomy, now this is you. 
This is how it applies to you specifically. So it's it's a little harder to teach in a, a very large free source format because you it relies a lot on feedback from the practitioner. Um, but there are some things and there are some workshops I'm hoping to be able to offer one here that's a little more specific about breathing mechanics. Um, CO2 tolerance is um, a, a really, really good breathing practice. There are some people I'm going to tell you guys that you should follow if you want to um, check into this. Um, one of my colleagues, her name is Barbara Tanza. She's in Slovenia. Um, she's BT underscore breathing coach. And I think, Gigi, do you have this whole list that I gave? Okay, I'll, I'll make sure that you guys have it in the notes somehow. Um, but she's on Instagram. She shares a lot about nasal breathing and CO2 tolerance. Super important right now. Super important because that gets into not only the breathing mechanics, but the interaction of the nervous system and your breath. If you're breathing well, your nervous system is going to be a little more calm and a little more level. If you're not breathing well, you're going the opposite direction. So she's one. Um, the Distance Project is another one, HHP Foundation and Power Speed Endurance. Those are all very deep into breath practice. And um, they, they also do, uh, they advocate yoga breathing, but they're very, very specific. So they're really good resources. Um, and then of course you can also reach out to me. Um, but uh, the trick is our mind and our body influence each other. So if your breathing is not optimal, you're sending messages throughout the rest of your body. I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe. So if you can get in and rework your breathing so that you are breathing in an optimal manner, that's also sending messages, I am safe, I am safe, I am safe. Does that make sense? Um, so it, it becomes the cyclical thing. I just okay. wanted to say that I put them in the notes. Uh, right. I believe I have. If everybody can see that, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. I also want to say we've got five minutes. Great. Um, yeah, and we're 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 getting there. Okay, wonderful. Well, yeah. I'm just trying to do my. Job. I'm the timekeeper, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank and you. This has, been, I, this has been fantastic. We're so grateful that you uh, had this time here with us today. Oh, thank you, Gigi. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple other little things. So, um, box breathing. Explore that. Box breathing is what Navy SEALs use to train. And again, what we're doing is we're training not just your breath, but your nervous system so that under great stress, your body can remain calm. It's very, very important. And for first responders and all that stuff. So Diana, this the box breathing would be really, really effective for you and the CO2 tolerance training. Very effective for you. And if you want to reach out to me directly, Diana, I can hook you up, okay? Um, so uh, here's a, a, a tip. So when you're really, if you're really struggling with your breath, you can lay on your belly and then try to breathe up away from your belly into your back, breathing in and out through your nose. Nasal breathing is another very, very strong signal that you are sending your body that you are safe. Because when you're in a fight, you're breathing through your mouth. <sighs> when you're running away from a tiger, you're breathing through your mouth. So if you're breathing slowly through your nose, that's sending a different message that's saying, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. And that's going to bring your autonomic nervous system down into a little better re regulation. Um, okay, super quick. I have like three or four more little things. Um, make sure you're taking breaks on your computer because vision changes are also super important for this fight or flight thing. Um, short distance, hand-to-hand -hand combat, our vision is focused right here. That's fight or flight. I may or may not be in danger when I'm very close, but it's it's definitely a different type of nervous system experience. And our um, where our computers are visually is our, it's sending us up into the sympathetic autonomic tone, which we don't want. We want to be in parasympathetic, nice and calm. Um, the opposite of that would be long distance. If you see something at the horizon and the horizon is clear, there are no predators. That's sending, again, we're sending messages to the body. Hey, guess what? I'm safe. Look, for miles around, there's no man-eating tigers. Look at me. I'm fine. 
So at the very least, take breaks and change to a long vision. Look as far away as you can. Look out the window. Look at a painting on your wall that has a horizon. And if you don't have anything like that, close your eyes and imagine this is the happy place. Go to your happy place. See the horizon in Hawaii across the ocean. Go to the mountaintop in your mind and see the horizon because that is going to send a very strong message to your body. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. And that's what we want to do. Okay. Um, get outside. Who was it that said they wanted to go for a walk? They have to keep moving, go for walks. Get outside, get that vitamin D, move around, get some sun, get some air. Look at the horizon while you're out there. Um, exercise, get those pheromones going. And um, dance, sing, get that, just get things going. All of those things are going to produce the feel good pheromones, which is what we need to build right now. Sitting and looking at the screen does the opposite. Okay, so that is all that I had for you guys. Um, look at that, 1049. Yes. I'm sure a few people might have questions. Do we have time for a couple questions, Gigi? Sure, we've got a couple minutes. Yeah? Okay, does anybody want to, uh, if you have a question, want to just unmute yourself and announce you who you are and state your question? Okay, well, it looks like, you know, uh, again, I want to thank everybody for joining us and for supporting 3D Theatricals and our 3DU series. Thank you for having me. It looks like a couple people did un unmute themselves. Okay. I, don't know. Yep. I just want to say thank you again for... Oh, you're welcome. This. You're welcome. Thank you for the work you're doing. Yes, Diana, thank you so much. Yeah. Putting yourself out there to keep everybody's safe. I just can't even imagine, but we're so grateful to Diana, to all of you, Crystal, for everything that you've given uh, us today in a very crazy time. We're so, so very grateful. Of course. So please uh, spread the word on your social media and have people join us. The, the more the merrier. And we want to just keep you, make sure that you're all healthy and safe. Crystal, again, thank you so much. For being of course. Here. Thanks for having me. Bye guys. Bye everybody.